Okay, so the first thing we need to do is detect when the buttons are clicked because we're going to click on one of these three buttons after we've entered in some kind of normal uh, lorem ipsum text to turn it into a themed lorem ipsum, right? So we need to listen to these buttons and determine what this data attribute is when we click on a button. So let's go back to index.js and come to the bottom. We've already set up these event listeners. We cycle through the buttons. We say for each button, add event listener, click, and we take in the event object. Now, the first thing we need to do because it's inside a form, this button is to prevent the default action because otherwise the page is going to reload if we don't. So E dot prevent default like so. The second thing we need to do is check, do we have a value inside the text area? So it might be that we've clicked on one of these buttons, but we've not entered anything into there. Now, if that's the case, we don't want to go ahead and start calling these other functions because there's nothing to flavorize. So we need to check if we have a value for the text area. Now, remember, we have the text area right here. So I can copy that, come down here and say if, then I'm going to paste it in and say dot value. So if we have a value for it. And then inside this if block, we want to find out which button we clicked on. We basically want to get this value, the flavor data attribute, okay? Dead easy to do in JavaScript. So I'm going to say const f for flavor. So we're going to store it inside this variable. And we set that equal to e dot target. Now that gets us the target element that we clicked on. So the particular button, is it this, this, this? And then once we have the target, we can use the data set property to get data attributes. And then whatever we called the data attribute, in our case, it was flavor. So data dot flavor. And that gets us whatever the value is inside the button that we clicked on. So ninja, Pokemon, and space. And remember, they kind of correspond to the three different properties, ninja, Pokemon, and space. So we have that value from the button. Next, what we want to do is call this flavorize function because this is where all the magic is going to happen. Inside this function, we're going to take the text that the user has typed in, you know, the general lorem ipsum, and we're going to flavor it with some of these words dependent on whatever the value of the flavor is, whichever button we click. So let's go down here and call that function. And remember, we're going to return something from here because then we need to pass it into this update output function so we can output it to the DOM. So I'm going to store the return value inside a constant, which I'm going to call text. And we'll set that equal to flavorize. And we pass in those two things, right? We pass in the input text, which is the general normal lorem ipsum, and then whatever flavor. Now, this flavor thing, in our case, is going to be one of these arrays, either the ninja array, the Pokemon array, or the space array. Or if you wanted to, you could just pass in the word, the actual string value of Ninja Pokemon and space, and then get the array inside here. I'm going to pass in the array itself. So let's come down here and say we want to pass in the text area dot value. That's the text we're passing in, the lorem ipsum. And then we can use this object, flavors, and we want to get a specific key from there. And the key is stored in this constant F because it's this key, right? Ninja Pokemon or space. So we can't say dot f because that will look for a property called f. Instead, we have to pass it in square brackets and pass in the variable. So then it will look for flavors dot and then whatever the flavor is. Okay. So we're passing those things in to the function now, the actual lorem ipsum and also the array that we need to kind of flavorize the text. Okay. And we want to look at every third word of the input text and replace every third word with a random word from whatever flavor we're using, whether it's from this array, this one, or this one. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now inside this function. So let's just think about this for a minute. What have we got? We've got a big, long ass string, a load of lorem ipsum, probably. And we want to basically cycle through that string and change every third word into a random word from whatever theme we're using from this array. Now, there's loads of different ways to do this. The way I'm going to suggest is that we split this string into an array so that every word becomes its own position in the array. So it's a bit like this right here, where each position is a word, but it's going to be the input lorem ipsum. So a massive array, there might be 500 different words in it. And then what we're going to do is use a for loop to cycle through each one of those words. And where we have a third word, so number three, number six, number nine, etc. We're going to change that for a random word in one of these things right here based on the flavor. 
So let me get rid of this comment first. And I'm going to create a new const and I'm going to call it text array. And we set that equal to the input text, which is a string. And then we're going to use the split method on it to split that up into an array. Now we can say where we want to split this particular string into array elements. Well, every time there's a space in the string, we want to split it. Does that make sense? So we put a empty string there, if you like, or just a space in here. And that says, whenever you find a space in the text, then I want you to split at that point every time. So basically every word will have its own position in the text array. So now we want to cycle through that text array. So let's say four and we say let i equal zero and then i is less than text array dot length. This is just how we cycle through an array. And then each time around we want to add one to i. So you should be pretty familiar with this kind of syntax. This is kind of beginner JavaScript. It's just a simple for loop to cycle through each word in the text array. Now we only want to do something if it's the third or sixth or ninth, you know, every third word basically. So how can we check that? Well, we can use modulus or remainder. So we could say if, and then I, which is the index, modulus, some people call this the remainder, three, is equal to zero, then do something. And what that means is take the index and divide it by three. And if the remainder is zero, then we're gonna do something. So that's every third character, right? So at index three, for example, three divided by three is one. We have no remainder, so the remainder is zero. And then we do something in here. If this is six, six divided by three is two. There's no remainder. so the remainder is equal to zero, then we do something in here. If this was seven, seven divided by three is two, remainder one, right? So the remainder, which is what this is, would be one, and that doesn't equal zero, therefore we don't do something. So this is only gonna fire then for every third word, essentially. So what we can do in here is we can replace text array at that particular index with something else. Now we want it to be a random word from one of these. We don't want to cycle through these. We want it to be random. So the first one might be this, the second one this, then this again, then this, then this, then this, etc. So how can we get that random position first of all? Well, let's do that. We'll say const random and we'll set it equal to math.floor. I'm going to write this out and then I'm going to explain it. Inside here we say math.random and that's a function, and we times it by the flavor array, which we pass in. Remember, that's either this array, this array, or this array dot length, like so. So this length is either going to be one, two, three, four, five in this case, six in this case, and five in this case, right? So what we're doing is say math.random right here. That gets us a random number between zero and one. So it could be like 0 0.35, and then we times it by the length of the array. Now this right here should be the max we want the random number to be. And that's right, right? We want the random number to be the maximum, the length of this. I hope that makes sense. So we times it by whatever the random number is. For example, 0 0.3 times three, that would be 0 0.9, right? And then we floor that, which means it goes down to zero. So it would get us position zero, and that's this word. Now, if this was 0 0.8 and this length thing right here was five, so 0 0.8 times five is four, we floor that, well, it's still four, so that's zero, one, two, three, four over here, okay? So that's how we're getting a random position. And now we can use that down here. We can say flavor and then pass in the random index. So we're getting a random word from here and we're updating the index of i inside the text array to be that random word, okay? And that's every third word that we're doing that. So we're cycling through the whole text array doing that. And at the end of it, we've still got an array. So we have to then join that array into a string again. And we do that using the join method. So we can say text array dot join. And where we join each element in the array into a string, we want a space. It's basically the opposite of this split method right here. So we're joining and adding a space between each element. So now 
we're turning it back into a string, but that string now has these random flavor words inside it. Now I'm going to return that from this function. So we flavorized it. That's the meat of this challenge. And down here now, we're storing that inside this text constant because we return it. Okay. So we have that flavorized text. Now we want to output it to the DOM. So we can call that second function, which is this update output. So updates output. Oops. What am I doing? Control Z. I want to copy that, paste it down here, and we pass in the text, which is this argument. So all we need to do now is say output. And output, by the way, is this thing right here. We grab it from the DOM. That's this div where we want to output the text. Scroll back down here, output dot text content is then equal to the text that we take in right here, this argument. Okay. So pretty simple in the end, right? So we're doing all this stuff with the buttons. We're getting the flavor from the button, calling this flavorized function to do all of the magic inside here. We return the flavorized string. Then we call this function to output the text and we do that right here. So fingers crossed, my friends, this should all work. So then I'm going to paste in a load of normal lorem ipsum in here. You can see there's no kind of flavor or theme to it at the minute. And then I'm going to click on Pokemon and we can see all of these random Pokemon words. Ash, that's one as well. Jim. And if we look over here, Pokedex, it's going to output quite a lot. Pokeball, Pika, all of these random Pokemon words are making their way into the text and they're being output right here. So it kind of flavorizes that lorem ipsum for us. Space, and it does the same thing. Galaxy, universe, stars, etc. And Ninja does exactly the same thing. Awesome. So my friends, um, I hope you had a good go at that challenge. If you didn't work it out, don't worry. It was a little bit more difficult than the ones I've put up in the past. And I will see you in the very next challenge. Thank you.